Hi, I'm Paul Ronnie, Professor of Aerospace and Mechanical Engineering and Chair of the Department starting July 1st, and this is my friend Ake, honorary member of the class of 2024, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about AME 101 and what to expect in that course when you arrive here in the fall, either physically or virtually. First of all, a little bit about my background. Uh, I have degrees from Berkeley, Caltech, and MIT. I was a postdoc at NASA and with the Navy. I was on the faculty at Princeton for seven years before coming here in 1993. And as I said, I'll be department chair starting July 1st. Uh, that's my contact information there. And I'd like to say that I've taught this course, Amy 101, for most every year for the past 15 years. And uh, it's one thing I really don't want to get. I really like teaching the students as they come in. They learn so much about engineering in their first semester, and I like to be a part of that. So a little bit more about myself. As you see, that we don't own Ake. The course we own is called Cavalier, but he's busy right now. Uh, and I like outdoor sport. Yeah, that's me on the, uh, on the white water there. I like growing tropical fruits, trying to stay active. And uh, I was a backup crew member for two space shuttle flights uh, back in 1997. Didn't get to go into space, but I went through all the training. So what is AME 101? Uh, what are we trying to do in this course? Well, I consider it to be boot camp for engineers. Uh, now, may, you may not like your drill sergeant when you're in boot camp, but when you're down in the trenches being shot at, you're glad you had that training. Uh, I want to provide you, this is not a weed in or a weed out course. My goal is to give you an accurate understanding of what to expect over the next four years so that you can make an intelligent decision if that's what you want to continue. And most students do, at least in some form of engineering. But even if it's not, at least you've had a good experience and can make it an informed judgment. Uh, I also want you to develop pride of ownership in the knowledge that you've gained and have the confidence to use it and not just rely on intuition or what somebody on the internet said. So there's three parts to this course. The first part is there's a lot of moving parts. It's a complicated, a challenging course from my perspective, from your perspective, as well as that of the teaching assistants. So the first part is the usual lecture part of the course, which is you know homework sets, uh, exams uh, resulting from the lecture material. Then there's the graphics lab part of the course, and then there are a couple of group projects. There's also some bonus activities, as I call them. We learn more about the student groups, engineering student groups that are operating on campus. I encourage you to check out my website, in particular, uh, uh, the AME 101 website. Last year's lecture notes and homework assignments are already on there. Uh, in terms of what's going to happen in terms of COVID 19 accommodations, I really don't know at this point. I hope we'll be on campus. In what form, of course, we just don't know at this point. It's too early to say. So in terms of the lecture part of the course, the first third is what I call engineering tools. You learn about units in a way that's probably different than you've learned about. It's not just converting feet to meters and miles to kilograms. Oh, wait, I can't convert miles to kilograms, can I? Can I convert a pound force to a pound mass? Are they the same? Anyway, you learn about all that. And based on that, uh, uh, I'll teach you something that I call, it's my own creation, called engineering scrutiny. We learn how to scrutinize your results, to be your own worst critic, lest someone else be your own worst critic about the results you produce. The second part, which will take about two thirds of the time available, is uh, introduction to the key topics of, uh, and some of the key topics of engineering that you'll learn about over the next four years. Static, some of the forces equal zero, strength of materials, bending of beams and such, uh, fluid mechanics, uh, thermodynamics and energy systems, and heat transfer. You'll have courses in all of these, but this will just be a short introduction, top level, that I think will make it easier for you once you get to the full-blown course. As I mentioned, I'll also learn how to use a software tool called SolidWorks to do computer-aided design, and your final project will be to build virtually this uh, two-stroke engine. Now, one student a couple of years ago took it one step further. It wasn't part of the course, but he actually built it physically and 3D printed it. And it was so cool, I thought, hey, can you build one for me? And he did. Uh, another part of the uh, SOLIDWORKS aspect of the course is to learn how to do stress analysis, we call finite element modeling. And you can see the different colors here refer to different stress levels. And this will be important in your second group project, where you're trying to build the best bridge that can hold the most weight uh, for a given you know, maximum bridge rate. And this will help you design those bridges. And so, as I said, there are two group projects. The first one is so-called King of the Hill, where you build little robot cars. 
that try to compete for possession of the top of the ramp. Uh, and the second one is a set of 3D printed bridges where you do a lot of um, design work and analysis to come up with the final design that you think will hold the most weight or again has to span a certain distance and can't weigh more than 50 grams. So finally, some suggestions, and I think pretty much any um, instructor would give you almost the same set of instructions. Just come to lectures. It'll be so much easier. Come to lectures. You see what I think is important, and what Ake thinks is important. I also encourage you to study both independently and also as part of a group, because believe me, as much as you think you might understand something, you really don't understand it until you've had to teach it to somebody else. I know that from many years of experience. Also, try everything. This is a university. The root word is universal. If you don't figure out what you're passionate about now in these next four years, what exactly are you going to? I also suggest you join two student groups, one that's related to your major, one of the design teams such as Formula SAE, um, Aero Design Team Rocket Lab, or do uh, directed research in a faculty member's laboratory. And then do one thing that's totally unrelated to your major. Maybe, you know, join the equestrian team or uh, marching band or some sort of athletic team or some community service, up to you. Uh, also, finally, go to faculty members' office hours, not just for coursework, not just learn how to do the homeworks set, but also, let's say you're interested in some 18th century French author. There's probably somebody on campus who's an expert on that. Go to his or her office hours, get their perspective on that person, that author. And finally, have fun. There's gonna be a lot of changes in your life over the next four years, a lot of challenges, a lot of joys, maybe a few sorrows along the way, but have fun. And that's it for now. And so goodbye from Ake and I, and we'll see you either physically or hopefully physically or virtually in August.